Field at Mile High here in downtown Denver. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Houston Texans and the Denver Broncos. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. I saw you give me that look, and you didn't mind at all that I started by saying C.J. Fedorowicz because the name can put you on the DL, but boy, did he have a big game <laughs> against Indianapolis. I try to stay away from those complicated last days, but he did. He had a touchdown his second of the season, 85 yards receiving. He's 6'7". He's a presence. He has some really big catches down the stretch, though, to get him to overtime. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I saw Von Miller in college at Texas A&M, and all I kept hearing about was his speed off the edge to the quarterback. But what impressed me, his balance and his ability to take on blocks and be a force in the run game, as we just saw there. They snap it at one. Now it's Osweiler. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. Green, 39. Green, 39. From the gun, it's Osweiler. Surveying the field. He's going to float this one deep right side. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. He'll send this away into the Rocky Mountain night, and it's a good one. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. You know, these Denver Broncos, as they come back out there on offense, only 13 points they posted in Week 6 against the Chargers. In fact, their loss broke a string of 15 straight road wins within the division. That was an NFL record. So the negative, obviously, was the loss. But when you look at what you just said, 15 straight road wins within the division. That's a pretty good trade-off right there. One loss compared to that. Great string they have going. They expect to start one again. And the next one, they'll do it with their head coach, Gary Kubiak, back on the sidelines. He missed the last game due to illness. Just 37 yards on 10 carries in week six for C.J. Anderson. And Charles, that's three straight weeks for him now, sub 50 yards. And one of the things that really connects the dots with the struggle is we haven't seen the big breakout run from him. You remember last year against New England in the snow, right? You remember the big run to finish things off in overtime? We haven't seen that bounce from him. He does everything else so well, protects the passer, you know, can get out in routes and catch the ball. But you need those big runs in order to increase their offense. You know, for Demarius, through six weeks, he's only sitting at 416 yards. He's had four straight seasons of 1,300 or more. And when he has those sort of years, when you see those numbers, you're usually looking at a big yards after catch because that's what he does so well. Big body guy who can run. He'll run through tackles, break them, and get that additional yardage. And I don't think he's getting as much of that in 2016 as he has in the past. And their loss to the Chargers, five catches, just 35 yards. Brian Cushing, the linebacker, in on the tackle. So the offense looking at a second and eight. They run it again with Anderson. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Third down and eight now. Here we go now. Three, 19. Now Simeon. 
incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Here's Riley Dixon now, standing right on his own five-yard line. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Texans take possession. And now out comes Houston. Lamar Miller and he'll get this up only to about the 33. Lamar Miller is a Miami native went to the University of Miami but he has found a home in Houston and he's being used the way he wants to. Heavy volume ball carrier and catches it well out of the backfield too. A lot of volume against the Colts. Yeah he said out of the backfield receiving touchdown but 149 yards on the ground and a touchdown there as well. Yeah, how about that catch though? Oh what a play by Lamar Miller. On second down here's Miller. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And that's a guy, Lamar Miller, from Miami, went to the University of Miami, was playing for the Dolphins, but now moved to the Lone Star State. Yeah, how about that? And sometimes that change of scenery, it may look like it's going to affect him adversely. He's away from his home for the first time ever. But sometimes you get out on your own somewhere else. That can increase your performance. You only focus on your football. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. They come out here in the eye. A first down carry now for Miller. And now Miller hit, and he fumbles. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice that fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Well, incomplete there, but Charles switching gears for a second, talking about quarterback play. We have seen a lot of good quarterback plays so far this year, haven't we? We always talk about Drew Brees. That's almost old hat, but let's give him his respect. But how about some new names that are on this list? Matt Ryan has elevated his game to its highest level. How about what Sam Bradford has done in Minnesota? Did anyone really see that coming? And the rookie, Dak Prescott? He deserves big-time mention for the start he's given Dallas. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. And defensively, it's a nickel formation here on third down and nine. Simeon. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on them. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. 
Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Eight yards to go here on second down. Again, it's Miller. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. So the pickup there for Lamar Miller, and he actually shredded his current team last year when he played against him 175 yards, another 61 in the air, and two touchdowns. I guess that's a classic example of if you can't stop him, go get him, put him on your team. Lamar Miller, a big-time pickup for the Texans. From the gun on third down, Osweiler. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Here's Shane Leckler now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And still no points on the scoreboard. You're coming off of the three and out. They're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look at look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. And he's brought down after a good game. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. the offense lining up first and ten. Hang on now. Green 39. Green 39. Ah! Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. And now they're in the hurry up. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Great, nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The former number one overall pick, Jadevian Clowney, in there to drop him for a four-yard loss and it'll be fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. And here comes the Texans now. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. They'll throw on first down with Osweiler. He hits the first-year man, Will Fuller. And he's going to get this one all the way up to the 30. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Get off the field. Now let's go. Green 39. Green 39. 
Osweiler on first down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll make this a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Second down now after the pass completion. From the shotgun, Osweiler. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target, and it's third down. And the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion. Again, Osweiler. Drops it to Blue, complete. And he'll be brought down. Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Shane Leckler now as he's on to punt for Houston. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. They start the drive with Anderson. And now where are they going to mark him here? Well, they say he did get back to the one-yard line, but that could have easily been two points the other way. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. So plenty of action on the field, but no action right now on the scoreboard, at least as of yet. Nothing, nothing is our score. As we send you on to Orlando, we hook back up with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. The third quarter starts with a run from Anderson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards there on the pickup, and it'll be first down Denver. And that's a good sign right there as we start the third quarter. Because in the first half, not much space to run the football. And as we go into the half, we often think to ourselves, all right, what's the adjustment? What do they have to do? You know what a lot of the adjustments are? No adjustments. You know the game plan. They've been working on it all week. Maybe a little tweak here or there, a little bit better blocking, and now you're establishing the running game. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. On second down, Anderson. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now Simeon. 
to the sideline, and oh, a nice catch there. Made sure the feet were inbounds, and they were. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Simeon. And Green with a catch left side. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. down he'll drop to throw and that's going to be incomplete he was trying to get it to Benny Fowler that time and it's second down Second down. And the catch made. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And he's brought down. The 15 yards there on the catch and run. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. First down, here's the run with Anderson. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. C.J. Anderson, a 21-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos have taken the lead. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball, too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. To the touchdown. Here's McManus now to kick it away. Let's just feel it at the goal line. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. When we did DeMarcus Ware's games in Dallas, didn't we spend most of the time talking about him rushing the passer? We did, and how about now? Oh, boy, he's expanded his game in a big way. Really does a great job in the run game now, using his length, using his leverage to hold the point of attack and make plays, as we just saw there. Miller, the lone setback. He'll get the football here. And he'll get this one across the 20, but only up to about the 21. He'll get a couple yards back, but not more than that. They'll be left with 12 yards to go on third down. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Right side caught for Dorowitz. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and that's going to make it fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's Shane Leckler now. Welcome back now to Denver. It's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. Yeah. 
We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And it'll be first and 10 Broncos from deep in their own territory. And Denver getting set to take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Here's Anderson as they begin this series on the ground. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. In the backfield is Anderson. And he'll get it up the middle. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. It's a loss of four. Now third down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense. They were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? They'll look to throw. Finding time. Looking deep for Demarius. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver. And it's fourth down. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, they told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him think. What do you think, mean by that? Bro yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Now Osweiler on first down. And to the left side, Fedorowicz has it. And he's brought down. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. Nowadays, this has become routine, hasn't it? That was a heck of a route there by the tight end. A great double move for a big-time catch downfield. The offense certainly looking to score some points, but they also need ball security here late as we get down to the final moments of this one. On first and ten, it's Osweiler. The catch made by DeAndre Hopkins. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 20 yards on the pickup there. And it's good enough for a Houston first down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Osweiler on second down. Incomplete. C.J. Fedorowicz, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. Around two minutes to go, and if the D can hold them, 
That'll end this one. We always think about the offense attacking. In this case, I'm looking for the defense to do the same. They'll look to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Here we go, it's Osweiler on fourth down. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. C.J. Fedorowicz from 13 yards out. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this football game. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And no sweat, he puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This is fielded at the goal line. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And coming out now, the Broncos. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Simeon. His throw incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Check, 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 check. Let's go! Green, 39! Green, 39! Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass. Now Simeon. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 18. Give him 11 yards that time on the return, and out will come the offense as they take over. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. A wise move there, looked like nobody open. Now second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Throwing now is Osweiler. He's got time. Toward the sideline. 
cut, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Here's Osweiler. The hookup on the right side to Hopkins. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Now it's Osweiler. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. So just about a minute to go here, tie ball game. As fans, we love free football, but the guys in the field don't. They're going to attack and go for the win right now. Osweiler to throw. Surveying the field. On the right side, this is Miller. And a pretty little. Now the Broncos are going to take a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Shane Leckler now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And Denver getting set to take the field. They'd like to avoid overtime here, so maybe they can work the sidelines. But then defensively, how do they adjust to that if they do work the sideline? It's the old leverage game. And we usually talk about leverage at the line of scrimmage, right? Who's going to win with the low blocking and everything that goes along with that. But in this case, you're trying as a defender to leverage them towards the middle of the field, not let them get to the sidelines and try and tackle them in bounds in order to run the clock out. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the Broncos coming out now. They need to get this around the 40 on the other side to get into field goal range. Look at the clock, a decent amount of time here in a tie game. What do they do? No panic situation at all. They've got to get a couple of chunk plays, pick up nice bits of yardage. Target the sidelines. Target the sidelines because you want to get out of bounds and make sure that clock stops. Because if the clock stays running, that makes things that much tougher for you. It can always bleed out on you. to throw here on first down and it's incomplete he was looking for Jordan Norwood that time and that'll bring up second down looking to jam the receivers at the line here press coverage look defensively Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The safety blitz staged to perfection that time as they sack him for a loss of six. Partner, I know the ball security's preached like crazy, but every now and then you've got to know when to get rid of the football and save a little bit of yardage if you're a quarterback. Because now if you're the offensive coordinator, what does it do if it was third and 10 versus third and much longer as it is now? Yeah, it changes everything in terms of play calling and the pressure you might expect to face on the very next down. Had to throw the ball away and save the yardage. He didn't get it done. Nothing between these two teams for four quarters. Here we go to begin overtime. This will be taken in at the one. 
And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. They're set for their first drive here in overtime, and this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. It's been loud in here so far. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Wasn't able to get anything. No gain. Fumbled once already. Maybe he's being a little careful. Not necessarily on that play, but I'm sure that's in his mind somewhere. Oh, without a doubt, because protecting the football is job one for anyone who's carrying it. And that's exactly what he tried to do on that play. But it didn't gain him any yardage. First throw in overtime now for Osweiler. And to the left side, Fedorowicz has it. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up a third down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Here's Shane Leckler now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. He'll send this away into the Rocky Mountain night, and it's a good one. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. The Broncos' offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to him, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Uh, part one is done. Now part two. Now a run with Anderson. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Well, usually you don't think of the cornerback coming in for a no-gain play, but that's what we had there. Nice tackle. Yeah, and how about the range, too? Coming from the outside part of the play, moving his way into the inside and making that play happen. No gain for the offense. Big play for the defense. In the backfield is Anderson. He's going to get the football. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there, and it's third down. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game, but when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. Taking a couple yards shy of midfield. Oh, and you just can't do that. 15 yards on the roughing the kicker call. Absolutely inexcusable. The kicker's in a defenseless position, and he just gets taken out. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Right. 
see if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, Anderson. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. They run with Anderson. He's been the bell cow tonight. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And here comes play number six on this drive. Three down, three down. Now let's go. Blue Blue They'll run it now out of the gun. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. And I know it's hard in live action, but you've got to keep your hands away from the face. That's a 15-yard penalty. You work on it all the time, making sure your target area is lower and trying to keep your hands away from the face mask so you don't get the big penalty. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So the offense has it first and 10. In the backfield is Anderson. And they'll give it to him here. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It'll be their third and final stoppage here in overtime, and we'll be back. So here we go. Maybe the... And now the Texans want to call another timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. On the right hash, officially this will be a 51-yard attempt.